Good afternoon, everybody in Europe. Good evening, everybody in Asia Pacific, the Middle East, and good morning, everybody in the Americas. My name is Martin Cowan. I am contributing editor for T News and moderator for today's events. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us. We've got a great session lined up for you today, and I can say that because I've seen the slides, and there's some really um, interesting new stuff in here for you all to um, learn from. Um, the title, as I'm sure you can all read, Never Miss Another Revenue Opportunity, How Personalization Increases Sales for Low-Cost Carriers. Uh, it's brought to you in conjunction with our, our partners and friends at Box7. Now, we all know that personalization has been around for some time. I think when T News launched in 2009, it was probably one of the first things that we ever wrote about. Um, what I particularly think is particularly good about this uh, presentation that we've got is that it tells you how, how personalization can actually increase sales. So never mind the buzzwords, look at the revenues. This is all about how personalization can increase sales for low-cost carriers. A um, couple of housekeeping points. We do invite questions from the audience, so if anybody says anything at any stage that you want to sort of chime in, please feel free to key a question into the box, which you can see on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, there should be 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the webinar for uh, Q&A. Another um, part of the webinar for people joining for the first time is that we like to have audience polls just to get an idea of um, various topics relevant to the slides. But before we begin, a couple of housekeeping ones. I'd just like to ask everybody to um, respond to the following question, which is quite simple. Where are you located? just interesting for us to gauge an idea of how truly global we are as an organization. Okay, and that's quite quite a useful quite a useful um, response there. So we've got 60% in EMEA, 30% in North America, and then usual sort of 10% from Latin America and Asia Pacific. Um, so great, thanks for that. And then just one more poll. I think, Jean, we need to go to poll number two. There we are, just to find out which uh, travel industry segment you represent. So just um, select the relevant category, if you could. Oh, okay, so that's quite a nice mix that we've got there of 16% um, suppliers, one in five of you as an intermediary, 38% the technology provider, and um, yeah, hello to anybody from the consultancy or professional services um, department. That's a really um, interesting poll result because even though this has been positioned as you know specific to local carriers, it shows you know that personalisation is of interest in other um, verticals as well. So, um, great, thanks for the poll. So now um, let me just hand you over to um, the lead presenter from Boxever, who's going to um, introduce himself, the business, give you an idea of what's um, lined up for the next half an hour or so. So John, over to you. Thank you, Martin, uh, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is John Callan, and it's really my great pleasure to be able to talk to you today and to talk to you about how low-cost airlines are driving revenue and a better customer experience with Box Ever. Uh, next slide, please. So over the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, I'll be joined by one of our customers, Aurelius Noel from Viva Aerobus. Uh, Viva Aerobus is Mexico's fastest growing airline and really delighted to have Aurelius uh, join us and present to you. And in fact, Aurelius will be, will be presenting the bulk of the content you'll be glad to hear uh, on, this, on this webinar. Delighted uh, that Aurelius could join us. Uh, and so we'll see how and hear how his team faced the challenge of personalization and are already seeing uh, significant returns on their investments thanks to their work uh, with BoxEver. And then following that, my colleague Rubari will show you a behind the scenes look uh, at some of the capability uh, BoxEver offers. So next slide, please. So firstly, in case you're unfamiliar with who we are, I'll tell you just a little bit about BoxEver. We were founded with really one simple belief. The more you know your customer, the more value you can give to your customer. And we believe that each of your customers has a unique journey and that every step of that journey holds an opportunity for you to excite, to delight, and to deliver on your brand's promise. 
we believe that every interaction, every offer, every service touch point, uh, both before, during, and indeed after purchase, contains an opportunity for you to build a meaningful and profitable one-to-one -one affinity with your brand. And we provide LCCs with a port of entry to advanced retail digital marketing that really was maybe previously beyond their reach. Uh, we found with our customers that they can be up and running within four to eight weeks, uh, not only with uh, advanced e-commerce capabilities, including personalized offers uh, that, that deliver 4x conversions, but more importantly, significant boosts in ancillary sales. Uh, next slide, please. So I want to talk about the opportunity that you have to take advantage of all of your customer data so that you can deliver more revenue. So what you're looking at here is a typical customer's journey through your website. Uh, so starting from the landing page on the left through to when they search and to booking, payment, and then even coming back to manage their booking prior to flying. And there's no great surprise that in terms of the, the level and volume of traffic that you see on your site, you typically see these kinds of, uh, of curves in terms of site traffic as well as uh, conversion probabilities. Uh, you see a high volume of traffic around your landing page, but as your customer begins to search and engage and go through the booking process, uh, ultimately to, to a payment event, uh, you see less and less traffic on those particular pages. Now, uh, if we go to the next slide, please. Look, let's look at what happens when you increase the knowledge about your customers, uh, even before you've identified who they are. Uh, the first thing that happens is that your knowledge increases at every stage of their journey. And the second and more important thing that happens is that you know more about your customer earlier in their journey with you. And what this leads to is a change in their conversion probability. They're more likely to convert with you earlier in their journey. So what this results in is significant additional revenue. And for most travel retailers, this represents a huge untapped source of revenue that digital commerce and marketing professionals are quite simply missing. And you know, really they're leaving money on the table, quite frankly. So next slide, please. So in addition, we know, and, and you know, that when you can personalize across not just the early start part of your journey, but the entire customer journey, uh, the payoff is, is huge. And look, the, the statistics from, uh, from Forrester, for example, they came out with research telling us that just a 10% improvement in overall customer experience translated to $600 million of increased revenue for an airline. Uh, one of our own customers at Box Ever uh, recently reported an additional 4.3% of revenue per month, and that was only after two months of, of deployment. So the payoff, the payoff is real. So if we go to the next slide, you guys are familiar with these facts, you're aware of them, but the problem still exists. You still struggle to reap the benefits of your personalization initiatives, and I'm sure you want to know why. And I think that the answer may lie inside the following and the answers to the following uh, three questions. Number one, would you actually personalize more if you knew more about your customer, and not just their web history, but actually every single thing they have done and are doing currently with your company across every channel? Number two, are you able to adapt your offers and your communications, your messages, based on your customer's experience right now, based on intelligence and customer, uh, excuse me, and knowledge about your customer, what their experience is at this moment in time? And number three, and this is very, very common, are you still waiting for those promised uh, big data projects? Um, very typically, they're IT-led, uh, and you're waiting for them to produce results that you can actually use, that you can take, take action on. So next slide, please. So at Box Ever, we answer these questions really by starting with the customer, by understanding who they are, what they're doing, and what they need. And we do this by continuously capturing every single interaction that every customer or anonymous guest, importantly, has with you. And critically, we do it from any channel, not just your web channel, so that you can ultimately serve your customers on a one-to-one -one basis. And what we do is we feed this real-time data along with historical and social data into what we call our customer data platform. This is the industry's only real-time customer data store that's designed for travel marketing and commerce applications. And one of the things it does uniquely is it can resolve customer identity in real time. So next slide, please. Secondly, we believe that you should personalize using the benefits of predictive personalization using techniques uh, employed by artificial intelligence and data modeling. And for that reason, we have what we call the Box Ever Predictive Personalization Engine. It's arguably the travel industry's best intelligence-based solution for delivering personalized offers 
using things like rules, predictive models, and machine learning. This decision engine is the brain within the Boxever cloud, and it's built and continuously enhanced by a team of data scientists that we have here at Boxever. And ultimately, it helps you deliver smarter interactions between you and your customers across every channel. So in its totality, this is the Boxever customer intelligence cloud, and it's continuously working hard for our customers. It's constantly building up more and more information about your customers, learning and adapting offers to best suit your customers' needs right now. And a pretty remarkable statistic is that we can uh, sense and respond and do all this in less than 150 milliseconds, or less than the time it takes you to blink your eye, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. So next slide, please. And this is the, this is the final slide before uh, we shift gears and, and hand it over to Aurelius. I think it's important to have a look uh, at the journey that companies typically take on their data initiatives. These are data initiatives to help them deliver uh, better personalized messages and offers and really help them become data-driven marketing entities. And the first thing we see is that when it comes to personalization, different businesses are at different stages of maturity. So depending on many factors, including investment, time, and commitment to their data projects, uh, we've seen that the majority of airlines out there are typically at the lower end of the personalization journey. And there's, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, in fact, we believe that there's a distinct advantage for LCCs in this position, and I'll get into that in a second. Uh, what you see, though, at the lower end of the curve is companies beginning to create segments of their customers. Uh, so typically, you know, somewhere between five, six, or seven manageable segments, uh, maybe taking into account uh, parameters such as location, and buying preferences from, from past transactions. So as you progress, though, beyond that, from mass merchandising through to macro segmentation, you're getting into more and more granular levels of engagement with your customers. So you're slicing your segments uh, into maybe 100, 150 different groups, and you get into micro segmentation. And once you get into this world, things get pretty complex. Uh, so you'll turn to, and you'll need, artificial intelligence and what's called decisioning to carry out the rapid and continuous firing of appropriate offers uh, and responses to this larger number of segments. On top of that, you're getting into the use of behavioral and real-time data, otherwise known as context, uh, and knowing where and when and what your customer is doing at that time, and of course, uh, responding appropriately. And when you see this being done right, it's, it's pretty uh, exciting, especially at large scales. And what's interesting is that some uh, legacy carriers have, have invested millions of dollars and months, sometimes years of time, in, first of all, building a, a single view of the customer. Uh, they look for ways to unite their data. Uh, they pass all this through what's called activation layers and decisioning tools. And they've got to stack up and integrate all of that technology and change processes over years of development. And even after all of that, they often still struggle to deliver what the initial promise uh, results were. And so this is where we see the advantage for LCCs. What we've seen with our customers and customers like Viverabus is that by uniting their data through a customer-centric cloud platform like Boxever, they begin to see incremental value offered by sophisticated personalization way before you'd expect to get with the build-it-yourself approach. And not only that, our platform gives them flexibility to move closer and closer to that nirvana, really, of one-to-one -one personalization for their customer and they can do that without needing very complex technology projects with long roadmaps and a huge investment, uh, typically uh, what it takes to build it yourself. So it's a pretty, pretty exciting world, and hopefully this has given you a little, little taster uh, for the main event, of course, which is, which is to hear from, uh, from Aurelius Noel. So before that, I know we want to do a poll question. So Martin, I'll hand it to you to do the poll. Yeah, hi there. Um, so this is the third poll. Um, what are your top priorities for personalization? Which is a fairly straightforward, so I think there's a few options coming up. Um, unfortunately, the GoToWebinar um, backend that we use only allows you to select one, so maybe your top priority singular might be a more, more accurate question. I'll make a note of that for next time. But for now, just choose one, if you could, please. Okay, right, so ancillary sales and customer experience, um, way ahead of the other um, fields, analytics and insights, quite good, disruption messaging, not a lot of residents. I'm just, um, uh, John, I just wonder, is that is that a surprise to you, that disruption messaging is so low down? 
Uh, not really. I think the okay. what we hear from our customers is you know there's a, an immediate focus on how do I increase revenues for ancillary sales, how do I improve the overall customer experience, and I think it's it's a problem that still is uh, unsolved and has very real uh, benefits. So not not a great surprise, no. Okay, cool, fair enough. Um, and I believe there's another poll shortly. Poll number four. Interesting, uh, John, you talked about the, the, the higher conversion earlier in the funnel, if I'm not paraphrasing you. Um, so try this one then. When are your customers most likely to buy additional products and services? So again, please select one. Okay, and I think that sort of resonates with what John said earlier about earlier earlier in the process um, booking forty two percent. Although there's quite a strong, you know, one in three in that forty eight hour window before the flight, which is going. John, just a quick comment on the result, the results of that poll. Yeah, no, again, no, no great, uh, no great surprise. It's certainly reflected in, in the data that our customers uh, are accumulating. Um, nothing. Nothing stands out. It's a huge surprise here. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, um, now I'm going to just hand you over to Aurelius from Viva Airbus. Um, one thing I wanted to mention earlier was that the uh, presentation will be posted onto T News uh, within a couple of hours after the event finishes. So there's no need for you to try and screen grab every slide. Um, they will be available online. You know, within a few hours of the event. Finishing. Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. If you've been screen grabbing away, but um, okay, now over to Aurelius at Viva Airbus and um, to talk through your journey to personalization. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, T News. Thank you very much, uh, Boxerver, for for having me. Um, next slide, please. Um, Viva Airbus uh, is uh, a low-cost airline operating uh, in the Mexican market. Uh, we fly about uh, 10 million passengers. Uh, this year, and the market challenges we are facing are pretty much the same uh, that uh, anybody uh, faces. We have strong competition from both uh, low-cost airlines uh, as well uh, as, as the full-service uh, carriers, uh, and uh, uh, because we're operating mainly a domestic model, uh, there's there's not much product differentiation uh, going on. Um, so the challenge for us is really how can we uh, el deliver to our customers uh, a more personalized uh, experience, uh, not necessarily through product, uh, but uh, through a focus of understanding what uh, the customer wants, uh, what the customer needs, uh, and uh, then uh, reacting to those wants and needs uh, at, uh, at the right time. Uh, if you look at the market uh, around, uh, then you will still see that you know if you get messages uh, from airlines, being in confirmation emails, being in flight reminders, messages are still very much uh, generic, uh, right? And uh, you know that if you are a frequent flyer, uh, even you know, if you're a high tier uh, member, maybe in a in a frequent flyer program. Uh, messages that you get, the way an airline communicates with you uh, is not yet truly personal. Uh, so we have asked ourselves, uh, you know, how can this be, how can it really be uh, that uh, in this day and age uh, when you have the data you can still uh, see lots of generic uh, offers. Something is wrong and uh, we, we want to change that uh, in our market. So if we move to the next slide, uh, we can see uh, once more that uh, what I mentioned before, like we have a highly competitive uh, marketplace, uh, which requires us to be uh, better uh, at all uh, all the junctions, better in communication, uh, better in revenue generation, better in uh, in data crunching. Competition requires us to be uh, quick uh, to market. That means if we do projects, uh, we don't want to. Uh, spend six, eight months uh, planning uh, the project. We, we need uh, to deliver those projects uh, for the benefit of our customers uh, in a quick uh, and uh, efficient way. 
Um, and what, uh, as I said, one way really for us to uh, to be better uh, in this competitive market is the personalization uh, strategy uh, that uh, that we uh, have embarked on. Uh, obviously, what what needs to be done in order to get to the personalization? Uh, that is uh, what I will be sharing with you uh, in uh, in the next few slides. Uh, one central question here is uh, how can I make use of the data uh, I already have? Uh, today you have data uh, in various silos. You have data from the website, you have data from a reservation system, you have data uh, from different channels, uh, from your call center, uh, you have data from your app, from your mobile site. All of that data sits there uh, and waits uh, to be to be analyzed, waits to be uh, matched and linked um, so with the objective that you can form one single view of what your customers are doing, when they are doing things, what they are buying, uh, so that you can learn uh, uh, that you can learn from that uh, and offer uh, a more personalized uh, uh, experience. So if we go to the next uh, slide, we can see that uh, the uh, business challenges uh, that we are facing, which means uh, uh, what are the main objectives for our business uh, by uh, implementing uh, such a tool, were, for instance, to obviously increase conversion rates. Uh, increased conversion rates, as everybody knows, uh, will drive revenue. So, so that's a good thing because we will be able um, uh, to pay uh, for this database to pay uh, for this integration. Uh, another business challenge uh, for us is to make things easier. Okay, uh, easy to buy, easy to fly is one um, of uh, of our directions uh, that we have within the Verobus, and um, easy to buy will lead to higher conversion rates. One example that uh, we will be touching on uh, later on. Uh, it comes uh, in in the area of payments. Everybody knows that a payment in an e-commerce store uh, can be can be painful. You have to enter your credit card details, you have to enter your address, and so on and so forth. Some forms are, are not so much straightforward, and um, so the easier you make things, the more intuitive you make things, uh, the more uh, likely it is that you get a conversion because. The customer will be satisfied. Uh, the customer is less likely uh, to, uh, to to drop out. Um, so, for, uh, we experienced that in particular when we when we uh, introduced a process uh, uh, that uh, is focused on uh, making payments easy uh, with us. And you will see uh, later on uh, the example uh, that we uh, that we created. Uh, lastly, I want to touch on uh, one thing uh, that uh, John had also in one of, uh, one of the sites uh, called the future uh, of pricing. Well, we think that the ultimate um, challenge for us is to learn so much about our customers in the various channel in which, uh, channels in which they uh, interact uh, with us uh, and for the various products they buy with us that our ultimate objective is uh, to determine um, what the willingness of that customer, what the willingness to pay of that customer uh, will be. So we think first step is to learn about your customers, uh, which uh, the Box Ever tool allows us to do. Second step then uh, is to build a more effective and meaningful communication uh, with that customer. Uh, again, we're using uh, the uh, customization that Box Ever offers in that regard uh, to achieve that. And the third step. Uh, which we are not yet there uh, because uh, we only started uh, in uh, August, uh, September last year uh, with this project. Uh, the last step is really uh, to use all that uh, data so that we can offer a truly individual price uh, for the products that we offer to, to our customer. Um, if we move to the next slide, um, uh, we can see that um, when we uh, considered uh, what to do, um, we obviously uh, had the question on the table to build it. What what does it take uh, to build a solution uh, yourself? And uh, when you when you look at this question uh, seriously, you will find out uh, that it is a very costly uh, and time-consuming uh, undertaking. 
not only need to uh, not only do you need to source uh, the databases uh, necessary to store uh, the uh, extensive data, uh, but you also need obviously uh, have uh, do you need to build the engines that are necessary um, to make use uh, of that data. Uh, you need to have the analysts uh, and the engineers uh, to put this together. Uh, you need involvement of your IT team because you need to host the solution. So all of that, uh, as you can as you can already hear, uh, leads to the fact uh, that you say, okay, well I can't do it together, uh, and it takes me uh, X amount of money. Uh, but the key thing here is it takes you a long time to build, and you don't know whether you will get um, to the end of it um, in an effective and uh, and efficient way. And the advantage that Boxerva has at this point is obviously that you buy a solution off the shelf. One that you can customize, but uh, you have uh, a, proven, uh, a proven solution. Uh, obviously, there's competitors out there uh, to, uh, to the uh, Boxerva solution. We looked at them. We looked at the big uh, tech names uh, who have, uh, um, who offer uh, like uh, personalized uh, communication uh, as part of their generic uh, marketing clouds. Uh, I think for us the key point here was uh, that um, for those providers, uh, aviation in particular, um, the challenges that, uh, that we were facing uh, in, uh, in our market uh, are just one small uh, piece of interest. Uh, they don't have the focus uh, on on aviation and uh, the specific challenges uh, that we have uh, in our market. Um, so again, uh, given the track record Box ever has in the aviation industry, we felt more confident uh, going with a provider who already had experience uh, in our particular uh, vertical. Uh, and lastly, of, co of course, you can <laughs> you can do nothing. Um, but time will tell you, uh, in particular when you are working uh, in a competitive market, uh, that uh, that you are losing out uh, on a huge opportunity in both uh, revenue generation, uh, as uh, as you have said in your poll, is important for you, but also in uh, increasing uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we have um, the advantages uh, that we saw. Uh, or that we actually experienced with the box ever uh, application uh, listed down and I want to focus uh, here uh, on uh, two things uh, one I already mentioned is uh, the speed to market we signed this contract uh, in July and uh, we had the first uh, customized uh, use case uh, in market uh, in uh, September so that made uh, that made the project team happy, but also made uh, <coughs> our senior management team happy, uh, because from that point uh, the application started to, to pay for itself. And being a low-cost carrier, uh, this is uh, one thing uh, that is always uh, uh, in the forefront of uh, of what we do. Uh, the other thing I wanted to focus on uh, is the platform itself. <coughs> As I said, uh, there's different uh, phases uh, of evolution. Uh, the, the first and most basic one is uh, to, uh, to use the data that you already have <coughs> on your website and in your reservation system to build uh, an understanding of who your customers are and of what they do uh, in those two important channels. So that's, that's kind of like uh, the basis uh, which allows us uh, to build uh, from. Uh, then I want to pick out uh, the uh, predictive uh, model uh, that uh, can be plugged in uh, to, to, to use that data, right? And whether you use those predictive models uh, for, for, uh, for product suggestions, so what, uh, what, what, for instance, ancillary products a customer is likely to buy, or whether you use it, as I said, uh, as, 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 as the ultimate uh, achievement, so to say, uh, to, uh, to build a predictive pricing model. That is, that is up to you how far you will take it, but it gives you an idea how customizable it is. Uh, and for us uh, at Viva, uh, it's really uh, important uh, to have such a broad um, option, uh, to have such broad options uh, um, available. Uh, uh, 
Uh, we did uh, six use cases uh, in six months. Um, as I mentioned, uh, they have all been customized. Yes, uh, there are some off-the-shelf cases uh, that you can, can implement, but we quickly learned that uh, we have challenges in the marketplace uh, that require us uh, to tweak those uh, use cases um, to, to, to our market uh, requirements. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we, we had no issues uh, in, uh, in, in doing so. Uh, so on the next slide, uh, we can see uh, some of the examples uh, or some of the use cases that can serve as examples of what we have done uh, uh, over, the, over the past uh, six months. We have focused um, on, on ancillary upsell, so we have introduced uh, a process uh, that focuses uh, on um, uh, baggage. Uh, we identify customers uh, that have not bought uh, baggage uh, during the, their uh, purchase process, um, and we offer them uh, specifically um, to buy this uh, before departure so that they can save uh, versus buying it at the at the Apple. I think that's a classical example, uh, and that is uh, that is very efficient. Not yet really sophisticated, <laughs> but uh, it's a bread and butter case. I would say uh, a good one uh, to start with. Uh, another one uh, that's interesting to mention is uh, the cash payment uh, reminder. Cash payments are huge uh, in the Mexican markets. Make about thirty uh, percent of uh, of our transactions. And uh, what, we, what we do here uh, with people who choose this option uh, to pay is uh, we send them a communication and say, hey, uh, don't forget, you still have a reservation on hold, which will be cancelled uh, after 24 hours. Um, uh, so uh, please go to the store uh, and pay. We show, we show people uh, where the nearest store is. We show them uh, also other uh, payment options. Uh, if they want to switch, if they might not be uh, near to a store, uh, they can switch the payment option uh, and, for instance, pay with the card at that point. Um, so that's uh, a win-win both for the airline and the customer. The airline obviously uh, can uh, recover more help bookings uh, that, that will be paid in cash. In cash. Uh, that helps our conversion rate uh, in, for this product and for the customer. It's nice to see if you are on the go on your mobile phone uh, to see, oh, my next store is actually uh, around the corner, uh, so uh, I just go and pay there. Or, oh, no, I don't have time uh, to go to the store. I want to switch to credit card. Uh, easily done. Again, goes back to the philosophy also, uh, easy to buy, easy to fly. If you, uh, if you make it easy for the customer, uh, then uh, it's more uh, likely that they will buy and that they will uh, convert. Again, in the failed payment, uh, 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 the failed payment reminder is another example um, how uh, how we try to achieve a win-win. Uh, everybody has had that experience that a credit card was rejected for several reasons, right? And it should not be a big deal. The customer should not feel bad about it. So uh, we took this case, uh, and um, what we do is we retain uh, the card uh, where the failed payment occurred. Um, we send the customer communication after the failed payment uh, has occurred with the card details uh, and we offer a, a, a full range of other payment options, uh, including uh, to put the reservation uh, on hold for a while until, until the payment issues uh, have, been, have been sorted out. Um, these are uh, these are two examples that I asked to um, that uh, show you how we customized um, uh, things on the box server platform uh, and how, how they help us um, to generate revenue uh, and and customer satisfaction um, at the same time. Uh, in the next slide, uh, we can see uh, further examples and how they look. Uh, in terms of uh, of our designs uh, that we uh, that we have uh, put in, already talked about uh, the rejected payment and the ancillary upsell. <laughs> Another interesting example uh, might be uh, the urgency messaging that we do uh, on our web page uh, when you go to the uh, flight search page. <coughs> Excuse me, when you go to the uh, flight search page, what you will see is 
uh, what what we have in the box server database. We see how many people are currently looking or searching for a particular uh, flight and for a particular date. We show that to the customer together with the information when the when the last purchase on that route occurred, um, and in order to um, generate a little sense uh, of urgency, uh, we add uh, or scarcity uh, to be precise. We add the number uh, of available seats um, uh, to the to the to the left column. Uh, another very successful program we have is the abandoned cart program, uh, where someone who doesn't complete um, his purchase, but who just uh, does, does a pricing, uh, gets a reminder uh, a couple of hours later. Uh, again, we, reta we retain the card details uh, and we give the customer a, a nice experience. He just needs to click on the book now button and uh, he doesn't have to make the selection uh, for the flights and the dates again, uh, but he gets uh, directly uh, into the, uh, into the uh, passenger details uh, step. Um, so all of that are uh, examples uh, of use cases uh, we implement and uh, on the next slide uh, we can see uh, the results. Um, obviously we had a significant uh, revenue uplift uh, already uh, from uh, the first month uh, when we implemented uh, those uh, cases. Um, so the ROI that was, uh, that was uh, uh, a, a huge focus on when we did this project in the beginning uh, was out of question uh, after the first uh, after the first six weeks. Uh, so that's good for the business. And obviously, at the same time, um, uh, we wanted to improve uh, uh, communication, as as we mentioned before. Uh, and uh, our hope that this uh, increases customer satisfaction. Uh, is also uh, something you can see uh, on the uh, uh, chart um, that we put up there. Uh, our net promoter score um, has increased uh, from June uh, 2016 from around uh, 43 uh, towards uh, levels uh, of around 55 uh, at the end uh, at the end of the of the year. So obviously that's not all box ever. We have done uh, other um, uh, initiatives uh, as well around that. But uh, we are certainly convinced uh, that by not spamming customers, uh, by making uh, purchase processes uh, smoother, by communicating just the relevant things, uh, is something uh, that contributes uh, to uh, an increased customer uh, satisfaction. So what lies ahead? Uh, if we look at the at the next uh, slide, uh, we can see. Uh, I, I would like to uh, talk to you um, a, a little bit about uh, what we think uh, is important for us uh, going forward. Uh, one key element uh, that is at heart uh, is uh, to replicate uh, the positive customer experience and to replicate uh, the learning. Uh, we we do uh, about our customers across all the channels we have. In the beginning, I mentioned that we have a data today sitting in silos. So we already managed to combine data from the website with the uh, data we have in the reservation system. The next step is to really roll this out across channels. Uh, our booking app is a good example. What can we learn about customers uh, making purchases in the uh, booking app? What can we learn about uh, customers using the uh, booking app uh, to, to check in? What can we learn uh, about customers uh, purchasing items uh, at the airport or checking in uh, at the airport? How uh, what kind of different uh, experience uh, does a customer uh, want who buys his ticket uh, through a travel agent versus uh, on, on the direct channel. So being able to include more channels uh, is, is one of the things uh, we, we definitely look forward to do uh, because in our view uh, there is still uh, endless possibilities uh, on how to improve uh, interaction, uh, personalization uh, and uh, lastly uh, increasing um, uh, the satisfaction customers have uh, with the product 
by uh, addressing them uh, at the different times uh, in uh, in in the right. I just want to give you uh, an example um, before I hand it back. Uh, if you, for instance, come uh, to the airport uh, with your mobile phone, uh, you have purchased uh, your reservation uh, before on the on the internet. Uh, we realize uh, that um, our check-in, for instance, uh, is is very busy. It's Friday afternoon. Uh, we also realize, uh, given uh, uh, the data that we've analyzed about your purchase, that you haven't purchased an express check-in. However, we know at this time, Friday afternoon in Mexico City, check-in is going to be congested. Uh, we see uh, that you. Uh, that you are coming closer to the airport or that you are uh, closer to, to check-in time, you haven't checked uh, in yet. Uh, and we offer you uh, an express uh, check-in so that you can uh, avoid uh, the lines uh, at the airport. That would be an example to offer uh, 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 the right product uh, at the right time and to communicate on the relevant channel because you are on your mobile, you're not in front of your desktop. Um, and that is the kind of things uh, which we would like uh, to do uh, in the future um, and where we see uh, a lot of value and where we feel comfortable with the uh, partner we have chosen um, to, to be able uh, to achieve that. Uh, and with that, uh, I hand it back uh, to John. Thank you very much. That's great, Aurelius. Thank you so much. Really, really compelling. So I'm going to hand it back over to Martin for uh, the fifth poll question. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah fascinating, Aurelia. That's uh, really interesting. Get an idea of um, air sector in Mexico and how you know Boxella can help you, you know, get revenues so quickly. I think it's probably the thing I took away. Anyhow, um, we'll do the Q and A later. But for now, we've got another poll question. Again, it's a, it's a one answer only one. So uh, which data initiative is most likely in your organization today? Just to get an idea of where the, where the audience is at today. So again, it's one choice. Oh, we've got a none of the above option <laughs> on this poll. Okay, so that's again, um, I find that interesting in that the build it yourself is 55th, is half of you are building building stuff yourselves. Combining marketing clouds, one in five, all in one marketing cloud, one in five again, um, and none of the above eight. So I think we can quite safely say that those three categories are where Data, where we're at with data today. Again, John, just a quick comment on that. Yeah, again, it's 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 really reflective of, of, of what we've seen, what we see with our customers. And you know, the, the building yourself, I think it's a natural uh, path early on, but but quickly as hopefully as we've, we've uh, discovered and discussed today, it's it's very often not the best path. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, and I think we have another poll on its way shortly. Okay, so again, what are your priorities for data-related business challenges today? And again, it's just a select one from the following. So whichever one is the top priority out of, out of those. I would imagine that all five are a priority to a lesser or greater extent, but we are interested in the, the top priority. If you could oblige. Um, okay, yeah, so I mean, conversion rates would be the, the obvious one, and that's reflected with forty four percent. Trafficking acquisition, one in five, and customer identity, one in four. John, are you going to say that reflects what you're hearing from your customers, or are we going to have a, 
a surprise for poll number six. No, well, th th thankfully, uh, no, no surprises. Otherwise, we we uh, we wouldn't feel we have a good reflection of the market here. But no, I think maybe the the the, the low the, the six percent on revenue management marketing channels. I might have expected that to to be a bit higher. It's it's certainly a big challenge or you know, challenge that we're we're seeing coming down the pipe. Um, that's the only thing that that would stand out. But no, I mean conversion rates uh, and and overall customer identity. Clearly, clearly drive the conversations or are part of the conversations we're having with our customers. Yeah, I mean, again, I, you know, from a, a ten years perspective, the, the the revenue management stroke marketing relationship is something that we're only starting to see develop. Um, so maybe the fact that only six percent are looking at that is is reflective of that. That's quite a new a new concept. So, right, final tranche of the webinar before we go on to the Q&As. I'm going to hand over to Roo, who's going to um, walk us through a demo and some Q&As of his own. So, Roo, over to you. Thanks, Martin. Um, do, you, do you mind just uh, handing me the presenter role? Thank you very much. So you guys should be able to see my screen uh, right now for the webinar. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to give a brief, uh, very brief demonstration of uh, Box Ever's capability. Uh, we do have some frequently asked questions in slides after this. Uh, what I'm proposing to do is you guys will get the slides afterwards. So I'll do the demo and we can we can post the slides out to you so that we get some uh, Q and A, which is probably more beneficial. I'm going to show you two um, things today. You're going to see two tabs in my browser. Um, the first is uh, Spinair, which is a fictional airline uh, which is hooked up to Box Ever. Uh, Box Ever captures all the behavior that occurs on Spinair um, and also orchestrates any of the personalization that occurs on this website. The second thing I'm going to show is um, this, uh, the Box Ever system itself. So uh, this is the application which is hooked up to the back of Spinair. And here what you can see is the data being captured. Um, so uh, over the last uh, 29 minutes ago, uh, you, I, I would have set up this demo. Um, and if we uh, load the timeline again, uh, what you'll see is we have this uh, session which is loaded about 29 minutes ago. So we don't know a huge amount about this customer right now. So we're classifying them as a visitor. They have an open session. You can see I'm on, a Chrome, I'm on Chrome on my Mac. And you can see the events that we're capturing. We don't have a huge amount of data around this customer at all. Um, but what we might do is we might have something like a location or a weather that we've captured um, uh, via, the, via the website visit itself. Uh, and unsurprisingly, it's uh, cloudy where I am in Dublin. So given that we don't know a huge amount about this customer, the question is what can we personalize to this customer at this stage? But at the moment, we actually know a little bit. So we know where the customer is, um, and we know that roughly uh, where in the world they are, but we can probably get that down to a city level. So at the moment, the system is not necessarily doing a huge amount of personalization to me, apart from whatever information you can garner from the session. For the moment, um, let's do a search um, from Dublin to London. And we can see the search results are there. To already this point earlier, you can see there's three other people looking at this Dublin to London route at the moment. If I go back, uh, what we're doing is we're then personalizing and taking the intent data from the search and starting to understand how we can augment the web journey. So here we're showing Dublin to London but also to other European cities. We're also showing uh, recent searches, uh, so I can, I can add that search again, I can perform that search again quite easily. If I wanted to change the city um, and change from uh, London to Lyon, I should be able to change that, uh, go back onto the homepage, and the website should be reacting to the activity that I'm performing. So here we've added that search, and we're also showing uh, Lyon and other, uh, I guess, sun destinations all of this is being driven by Box Ever based on the context of the information that's seen right now. When I open up um, the timeline again, uh, what you'll see is we have this current session uh, where we're now searching for uh, Dublin to London, uh, and you will see the Dublin to Lyon search, and you can see that we're making personalized recommendations onto this, onto this web journey. Just to clarify, we close the session after 40 minutes, so when I set up the session, uh, during the webinar, it's closed uh, since the session started, so we have a new session here against this, this cookie. Um, so let's go ahead and perform that search from uh, Dublin to Lyon, and uh, let's continue along our way. So now we're getting to a phase where we're asked for personal information on the booking flow. So at the moment, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to give the information of Jack Smith. 
So here I'm giving first name, last name, email address, and phone number. And, uh, and let's continue. And here I'm showing some ancillaries in the booking path. So here we're shown choosing seats, getting insurance, and adding bags. These are fairly default offers um, for most uh, e-commerce providers, particularly in the LCC space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, refresh this page. And as this page loads, what you'll notice two things. One is that we have a retired guest at this point. And when I open up the timeline, there is no more information about this guest. The reason for that is that when we go and have a look at who's online right now, we can now see that we have identified Jack, we have matched and merged uh, his profile data and moved him across, um, and we can now see that we have an open session here. Um, and we're, we're matching, we're bringing all of that data, behavioral data from one session uh, over to another guest. So really showing the power of um, identification, identi identification resolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one other guest. So that's Jack. Uh, we don't know a huge amount about Jack. But I also want to introduce you to Grace. So Grace, we know a lot more about. Um, you can see we have um, some searches. We have a very rich um, timeline for Grace, where she's converted on a, a couple of sessions. We have a number of orders. And we also know that we can see that Grace is a loyal member of our loyalty program. So we can see that she's a platinum member, and she's got about 200 miles left to her, uh, to her next tier. And what we can also see is she's got a number of propensities. Uh, which we've calculated and added to the system, and a number of uh, service history uh, where we've had a delayed bag which was resolved um, and it occurred in July. So what you'd expect is that we treat Grace differently than we do Jack. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the anonymous, uh, start an as an anonymous guest again, and let's go through that as if we were Grace. So we'll continue, um, and we will continue through the selection page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify myself as Grace. And as we see, the experiences, the offers are different for Grace than they were on Jack. Even though we've only identified her on the last page, on this current page, we're now showing upgrading to keep her platinum tier, booking a space where she gets complimentary parking as a platinum member, and claiming a free bag because we, we had a bag delay issue in the past. All of these are being orchestrated by Box Ever by capturing all of that real-time event data uh, and making it available um, to, the, to, to the client side. So if we continue on, um, I want to show you BoxEver's omni-channel capability. So here, uh, let's imagine uh, that Grace has uh, not, she's forgotten her credit card in this instance. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel uh, this session, and I'm going to force close this session. Uh, so what this will mean is that the BoxEver system is uh, now considering that session closed. And if I show you my mobile device, this is an email that we've just received from Spinner. So let's open that email. And this is a live part of the demo where I show you my personal phone, uh, which can be risky at the best of times, but let's hope that it goes uh, well. So this is the Spinner demo uh, email. So we've received an email now uh, for the order that we're, for the cart we we're currently looking at, um, and uh, we can see all that information is there. So let's go ahead and book now. Let's imagine we're on the train later on, um, and we now want to, uh, to, to book that trip. So we're now connecting through to Spinner uh, on our, uh, on our our phone. So what I want to show you very quickly is I'm just going to go back to here and I'm going to show you Grace's timeline. So Grace's timeline um, we can see here is an abandoned search session which has happened uh, while I've been doing this demo. We have then executed uh, an intelligent cart recovery. You can see that's been successful and it's been opened. And now you can also see that I have, um, I have, I have opened a mobile session uh, which I'm showing you now live on my mobile phone. So let's complete our purchase here. Critical to this is the consistency of the experience. So I've been dropped into the Spinner booking engine already. Um, the information has been given already as to who this is. So we've identified Grace on this mobile device. That's fantastic. Let's continue. Um, what, I'm, what, I, what I want to, to note here is that the offers which are being shown to Grace are omni-channel. So we're, 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 we're moving across channels and keeping a consistent user experience. Um, so let's continue and make a purchase. We have our credit card, that's fantastic. Uh, let's book, and we have a number of offers here, and we can continue our journey with more personalized recommendations for London, or not. I'm aware we're out of time, um, so I'm just gonna refresh this page to give you a sense um, of, uh, of, of the detail that's here um, in the timeline. So you can now see we have an abandoned session, we have an email which has been clicked, so we're constantly getting that feedback to generate the single customer review. 
um, and we now have an order which is created, which is stored in the box server system. At this point, I'm, I'm aware that we are over time, um, so uh, I'm going to hand back to Jean, if that's okay, for the slides. If anyone's interested in a, uh, in a demo specific about how, how this is orchestrated in the back end and how we generate the uh, personalization on Spinner, um, please get in contact with us, and we're more than happy to give you a full, uh, a full demo. Okay, thanks, Ru. Thanks very much for uh, rattling through that. Um, I'm aware that we're we're over, but we've we've put a note out saying we're going to go five minutes over, and we've thank you very much for all the questions that have come through. Quite a few of them have been answered in passing, but there's one that is quite interesting. Um, I'll address it to John initially. I'm just wondering about sort of person management and HR. I mean, which 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 department within an airline do you think needs to you know, take ownership of the personalization projects because there's a lot of um, interested parties from yield, IT, marketing. Everybody has a has a has a has a, has a stake in the, the personalization um, projects. And then maybe just Aurelius, how how are you managing the relationship with Boxever internally? Have you got dedicated Boxever people? You know, is there a consultancy service that Boxever opens? So I'm just wondering in terms of how how it's managed from a, a, a human resource perspective. Mark, I, I can take that question first and then hand over to Aurelius. Um, I, think, I think that was the order of the question that you asked. So um, I guess from, from our perspective, typically um, Box Ever's acquisition or the focus on the customer tends to be driven by the marketing teams. The reason for that is they're struggling with inbound and outbound communication. They're really struggling to bring some parts of the business together. So it typically tends to be the marketing function. However, what I would say is to be successful, the business itself has to realize that the customer should be at the heart of every decision they make. Um, and when we talk to customers, I mean, the effective message is that your customers don't see you um, as, uh, you know, don't see your brand as a set of channels. So you probably shouldn't see and manage your business as a set of channels either. So it's critically important that you bring those parts of the business together focus on the customer, prioritize the work that needs to be done for the customer um, to remove some of the blockers that are, that are, uh, that are blocking either revenue or, uh, or decreasing the customer experience. Um, Aurelius, I don't know if you want to add anything to that or, or in the time we have. Yeah, I think the interesting one is how, how do we organize it? And just quickly, I mean, uh, with, uh, with the start of this project, uh, we reorganized uh, the team internally. We now have a customer insights team that reports to the to the e-commerce team, uh, and uh, the customer insights team handles all, all the communication. It's a central point of contact to handle all the communication um, uh, across the channels and across internal uh, departments. Uh, so everything needs to be approved by those guys, and everything is being discussed based on on the insights uh, we get from the customer through through the Boxever tool. Okay, thanks both. Um, I'll try and sneak one more question in. Hey, Martin, um, Martin, we Martin, up, yeah? Martin, this is Jim. Um, we do have some uh, frequently asked questions that Rue wanted to get in. Um, could we perhaps let Rue finish out here and then we could grab uh, a question or two from the audience? Yeah, no reason why not. So, back to Rue then. Yeah, I, I, so I guess if you guys are passing um, these slide decks out, I'm happy enough for you to cycle through these questions while I'm roughly talking about them. But frequently asked questions are designed really to answer some of the most common questions that you guys might have um, around uh, what your current capability are and whether box ever fits or not. So, um, Martin, if you want to if you want to pass through those slides, um, uh, if you guys are sharing those slides, I'm happy to take another question if we want to do that. Um, the slides should be fairly self-explanatory in the FAQs if we want to send them out afterwards. That's great. Thanks. Back to you, Martin. I'll cycle through these. Yeah, just a, just um, just a quick question. I mean, the 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 argument from uh, Viva Airbus is is quite compelling in terms of return on investment. You know, you know, speed to market. So, uh, John, I'm just wondering what what are the barriers to airlines? You know, adopting personalization techniques. Not necessarily what why aren't people buying box ever, but just generally across the airline industry. What what do you what what are you finding are the barriers to this? Is it a cultural, technical? I mean, why why are why do you think there aren't as many airlines at the cutting edge of personalization as there ought to be? 
Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a mixture of of the, the technical as well as the uh, inherent existing processes and the organization structure. I think Rue touched on it really nicely, where he said customers don't view brands and uh, you know a, a travel brand or really any other retail brand as a connection of channels. They view them as a brand, and so I think there are internal organizational uh, um, let's say inertia uh, factors in place. But the tech challenges are really really significant. Um, I mean, I think it's very easy to talk about um, the notion of, of connecting data together, uh, having a single view of a customer, uh, not just not just a historic single view, but a real-time single view, uh, and then applying a decisioning capability to to activate that out to channels. That, in that sentence, I've I've talked about an enormous complexity of mixing of different technologies, uh, different departments. Um, different budgets, uh, and so it's it's a very very complex technical problem, and, and it's the problem that we have, we have set out our stall to solve from day one, um, and I think that's really it, it's it's that kind of technical inertia as well as um, organizational structure inertia that that's there that's holding holding brands back from really achieving what they want to achieve, which is ultimately a connected experience, a highly personalized and relevant experience at every touch point. Uh, that that a customer has with with their with their brand. Okay, um, yeah, I mean that's what we, we, we find on teen years is that there's um, a lot of still a lot of sort of cultural and cultural legacy thinking happening in the airline space. Hopefully not in the low cost carrier space where you're operating. So listen, we're we're a minute over our five minutes being over. So I'm going to um, round this up now by just saying thanks very much for everybody for um, turning up. Thank you very much for the question and answers. Um, as mentioned previously, the slides will be available on TNews within the next couple of hours, so you can um, download and have a look at them and share them with your colleagues. Um, thank you again for joining us, and yeah, thank you and good night. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you.